minutes after the hour. Thank you for joining us. We're in the third hour of the Power Hour today, three hours from 7 to 10 a.m. Central Time. Joining us is our guest, Stan Deo, and in the studio, Doug Brethauer and myself. Uh, we're listening to Stan Deo telling us about the concern about a missile shield. Robert emails me several very interesting, fascinating emails about the fact that Stan is avoiding the subject of Comet Ison and says that he feels like Stan Deo is under a, a gag order. And he says, Stan, that you have avoided discussing the possibility of Comet Ison's devastating impact on Earth. Well, let me go back to Robert. And, and by the way, we are in the third hour. We're going to be waiting for our uh, she- Shepard and Bellis will join us regarding the issue of Sandy Hook and just a few minutes, but uh, Robert, finish what you had to say. I know you you quote uh, Jim McCanny uh, quite a bit. We've tried very hard to get him on the program, uh, but tell me what your thoughts are at this point, and what do you think Stan is not able to say that you would like to hear him say? Uh, well, I, I can understand he fears for his life, and uh, uh, they, they would march right up to him with CIA written on their hat and blow him away if they felt they had to, so Hey, I, I can understand there are a lot of things he won't say because he has so much credibility in his background so that anything he says, people will certainly believe it. So I, I don't blame him. But uh, it's What would you to- say for him that he can't say then? I think, I think the comet is the big threat, and uh, they don't want anything said about that. They want to keep a lid on it because of the chaos it will develop because people will realize that... Uh, uh, they're they're wasting their time in their endeavors, and that they should be preparing. Uh, I, my belief is you should you should be preparing spiritually now. We're we're at the end of a, a long course here. Earth is completely off track, and uh, as I've told you, in my emails uh, the cosmos is organic, and an immune response is coming, and uh, it's got to be brought back in line again. But. Uh, the powers that be want to save where they are, these Luciferians, as they call them, and I have personal experience with them. I know a fellow whose father was one, and he saw him change, and I didn't believe until he told me. But uh, they're desperate to save the planet for themselves because they have nowhere else to go. I've been told by uh, equally informed people as Mr. S- Mr. Deo that we've been under surveillance by entities from the beginning. All right. Let me go back to that issue uh, with Stan. Stan, are the aliens going to save us? No, but they will appear to uh, try to do so. I, as I explained in the Cosmic Conspiracy, this it was forecast a thousand, two thousand years ago. Uh, in fact, probably twenty-five hundred years ago, uh, in the Book of Daniel, uh, the the alleged aliens uh, are like beings from a parallel universe to ours, as the old records state. And certainly, the super beings were here when mankind was created. Um, and so they have traveled through time to our, our present day. And there's a great deception that's about to happen with the alleged aliens coming to save Earth from, you know, various crisis curves that are that are facing us. Now, as far as a gag order, I don't take orders from anybody except the good Lord himself. And, um, well, and, I, and Holly occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Well, yeah, yeah, I like living. And uh, But there are things that I that I do not discuss it in detail because of a lack of certainty on my part about the source you know, of the information, whether it's correct or whether it's disinformation. And there are things that, like that that I, I don't want to stir people up unnecessarily and frighten them. Okay, because. that I think is what Robert is talking about here. Now, Comet Ison, is that a concern? And when do you think, Robert, that Comet Ison is going to be an issue with us? Uh, and how much information should we know at this point, or could we know? Robert, are you there? Yeah, Robert, yes. are you there? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Professor McCain, uh, McCainy would be your source on that detailed information. But as you see from the information I just sent you, the sun has just opened up a vast coronal hole in the direction of the approach of Ison. And from the information I gave you on that site about uh, the uh, planet of physical nature of the universe, uh, the sun is balancing the magnetic saturation of, inter- of, of the uh, solar sphere. So it is already responding 
to ISON at this great distance that it's at. It's not supposed to be showing up until September of this year where it will be visible with the naked eye. So we're apparently dealing with an object, and I said, as I say, Professor McKinney is your source for this information, that uh, this is a very large, this is a very dangerous comet, and according to Professor McKinney, when it passes by uh, Mars, it will envelop Mars inside of its coma, and he believes there will be an electrical discharge. This this gives you uh, uh, ind- indication of what the mythology had talked about, Zeus throwing the lightning bolts. Now, we're told it's mythology. No, it's not mythology. These are events that happened in the distant past and have been relegated to, to mythology. These events have occurred, and they're likely to occur again. And, and uh, as it passes by Mars, it may change its orbit. These comets' orbits do change by the influence of the planet as they go by, and uh, this could deviate. It's already coming fairly close to Earth. When I say fairly, we're talking about several astronomical units, but still, if it changes its orbit and the Earth is comes in proximity to ISON, we could very well have the same electrical exchanges that are predicted to take place between Mars and ISON. Okay, let me ask, and let me go back, and, and unfortunately we're going to go to our next guest. I'd love to talk to you again, Robert. Thank you so very much for calling into the program today. Yeah. I'm serious. Excellent one, call. Excellent one, yes, call. Thank you, wonderful man. show. Wonderful show. Yeah. Thank you, oh, well, thank yes, you. Stan. Oh, man. And now let me just ask uh, Stan. Stan, do you agree, disagree with what Robert just said? Is Planet Ison something we should be watching? Oh, do oh, you watch... Ison. Well, Common, I said, sun, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is a sun grazer, and uh, and uh, certainly it's, it's worth watching because if it does trigger a coronal mass ejection of of large magnitude or a flare in our direction, you know, planet Earth, uh, this could cause a lot of the things that the biblical prophecies of the Book of Revelation talk about with the sun, as far as it getting hot and burning trees and and on, and, and burning, you know, boiling the fish on a third of the planet, which would be about the surface area that would be affected uh, if something like that happened rapidly while the, the earth was turning. Anyway, um, yeah, look, the electro discharge could well occur. I agree with Velikovsky that, and, and with McKinney and others that the, the solar system is a, an electrically charged system. Planets orbit where they have to. Those are stable orbits. And when a comet comes in, uh, you know, a Venus could have been a comet or a, an incoming body that jumped uh, orbits and down into where it is now, and it, it's the only planet that spins backwards very slowly. Um, yeah, there, 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 that's a whole discussion, and I think that Comet Ison uh, could affect the sun now because of the orbital mechanics of that invisible fluid of space that determines where orbits have to be. It's like an invisible splash wave of circles around a star. So when it's out there, you know, when that Comet Ison's way out there, it can be affecting orbits, the invisible orbits, you know, the orbiting ether space, if you wish, 